So if you haven't heard yet, breaking news today, Xbox, Microsoft, whoever you want to call them, all the same company, acquired Activision Blizzard. They acquired the entire company. And it, it's, it's important to say this deal still needs to go through a lot of regulatory approvals. So, you know, things, things, could, things could change here. Um, regulators certainly will be asking a lot of questions to, before this deal gets approved. They got to go through the US, they got to go through the EU. But let's break this down and I'm going to cover many, many aspects of this because this is a truly, no matter what side you, you know, if you're if you're a console, of, if you like a certain console or a certain platform or certain types of games, this news affects everybody. This is literally one of the biggest gaming news stories in history. So Activision was bought by Microsoft but for $70 billion. So to, to put that, to put that in, what's the word I'm looking for? Size, I, I guess, to put it, what's the word I'm looking for? Not ratio, perspective. To put it in perspective, uh, the largest gaming related acquisition ever just happened last week. It was, it was uh, Take-Two buying Zynga for almost $13 billion. That was the previous biggest gaming acquisition ever, 13 billion. Today, Xbox buys Activision Blizzard for $70 billion. So let's unpack this here. So we all know that Microsoft and Xbox have been buying up development studios. And we thought when they bought Bethesda, Bethesda was what? I think an eight or $9 million acquisition. Billion, I'm sorry, not million. We were, we were all like, this changes the game, right? Like this changes everything. Like they've been buying all these individual studios. Now they bought an entire publisher and they brought ZeniMax, they bought they brought in software, they brought uh, machine games, uh, you know, all those developers, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Doom, Quake, uh, all under one roof with Xbox. And people were questioning, well, what's gonna happen, you know, with, with the PlayStation versions of these games or the Switch versions of these games? Will they go exclusive to the Xbox? And the long and short version in Bethesda's situation was basically yes. Like Microsoft didn't come out and say flat out, like we will never put some of these games on PlayStation or Switch because you know, their strategy is one of being multi, multi-platform. But, um, so they didn't guarantee that none of those franchises will never appear on PlayStation or Switch again, but it ba that basically all those games are going to come to game pass day one even if they don't even if they do let's say they put the next fallout game on uh on playstation which again i don't think is very likely it's going to be on xbox game pass day one it'll be free well free you know you can get all those bethesda games for 9.99 a month for xbox game pass or you can pay 70 dollars for it on playstation like that is a huge 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 difference in value comparing the xbox brand to the playstation brand well now they bring activision blizzard under that same umbrella with the same strategy so this means this means call of duty this means diablo this means starcraft this means world of warcraft this means overwatch this means crash bandicoot this means spyro the dragon not only those franchises tony hawk's pro skater i guess um not only those franchises, but they bring all those developers and the, the manpower the Xbox Game Studios is going to have now is absolutely insane. So they now bring in Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer Games, Treyarch, Raven Software, uh, all of Blizzard, and Blizzard has countless teams. They've got the Overwatch team. They have the World of Warcraft team. They have the Diablo team. They've got other teams. And really, this acquisition comes at a very interesting time for Activision Blizzard because Activision Blizzard, as you all know, has been experiencing massive cultural issues. They're being sued by the state of California. They're being investigated by the federal government. All four cultural issues that stem from uh, dis discrimination in the workplace, sexual harassment in the workplace, uh, Blizzard employees are trying to organize to fight back against management, uh, the abuses by management, essentially. Bobby Kotick himself, the CEO of Activision, has been um, 
accused of abuses himself and harassment himself and everybody's been waiting for his ouster spoiler this deal is going to give you that ouster he will no longer be with the company once this deal is complete this deal is expected to be closed uh, sometime in the fiscal year 2023 for microsoft so it could close any time basically don't expect anything from this deal in the next 12 to 18 months um and Endo says Microsoft bought Blizzard for 18 billion above the company's market cap. No way they don't capitalize on that by going exclusive with COD. Well, that's that's the big question, and we're gonna get into that. So a lot of people are questioning, you know, are they going to make these games exclusive? And and I think Endo's right. You don't you don't pay for a company to not reap benefits, right? Like you're gonna, it's part of a grander strategy. I've already heard it asserted that perhaps Warzone will stay multi-platform, but the main mainline Call of Duty games will go exclusive to Xbox and PC. I could see that happening. Uh, that's that's short term. But again, it's important to remember that we won't see any fruits of this deal happen. Uh, any long-term fruits, of course, for at least probably two to three years. I mean, Bethesda, the Bethesda deal, uh, yeah, around three years on PlayStation, seems seems reasonable at the minimum at, at a minimum and that is the call of duty brand is so big and brings in so much revenue you know microsoft's not going to want to shut off those revenue streams which is where game pass comes in microsoft has been clear that they want xbox game pass or just game pass as it's mostly called now on every platform that they can get it on so not just on xbox not just on pc not just through xcloud for mobile which game streaming is all part of this strategy as well. They want it everywhere. So I think what they were going to do is they're going to leverage this deal, the Bethesda deal, all the output that they have. And they're going to say, hey, they're, they're going to put pressure on these other platform holders like Sony, like Nintendo. And, and here's the thing. Microsoft is playing the big game. They're competing with the likes of Amazon. They're competing with the likes of Google, with the likes of Apple. They want to control the ecosystem. They want to control the living room. They want to control all your devices. They want you using Microsoft products, playing Microsoft games, on Microsoft software, on Microsoft servers, all that. They're playing the big game. Sony and Nintendo are playing at, at video games. That's it. They're, they're playing a smaller scale game at this point. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit on something later because people are, have been asking me, and a lot of people freaked out. They did this when Bethesda happened. They said, oh, well, Sony's got to hit back. Sony's got to hit back. Sony's got to buy somebody. Sony has been buying up smaller developers. They bought Insomniac and got one of the deals of the century there. Insomniac is a great developer, and they got him at a very fair price. Um, so. My wife is, like, frantically looking for our cat, I think, and it's scaring me. Um. So anyway, Game Pass, what they're going to do is they're going to say, hey, the next Doom game, exclusive to Xbox and PC, and it's on Game Pass. The next Fallout, exclusive to Xbox and PC, and it's on Game Pass. The next Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield, right? And then, now when you add all these, these Activision Blizzard games in there, potentially the next Overwatch, potentially the next StarCraft, potentially the next Warcraft, uh, all these, the, the next Diablo 4, Diablo 4's release is far enough away. Hypothetically, that could become a PC and Xbox exclusive. Oh, I think that one will happen. Probably not. I think it's a little too soon, but you never know. Um, so they're going to take all that and they're going to say, hey, PlayStation, hey, Sony, you want these games? That's fine. Let us put Game Pass on PlayStation and you get them all. All, all your user base can get them all. And how what they get from that is they got they literally have Sony's user base paying for a Microsoft subscription service. Like it, it makes so much sense. And again, the value of paying for Game Pass on any platform, it, it makes paying $70 for a game on, on any other platform seem absurd. And they're they're getting like Microsoft is becoming a triple A gaming powerhouse. It's absolutely insane. Sorry, my wife just found the cat. It's freaking me out. So, 
um a lot of people you know are and I'm, I'm gonna bounce all over the place here Let, let's go back to hey ultimate let's go back to how this can be really good for well obviously this is a power move by microsoft we know what microsoft has to gain here right like they gain all these franchises all these new development studios xbox game studios has got to be between like what what is it like over 30 studios now right there is no bigger gaming company out there the only one that would rival it i think is 10 cent as far as actual manpower and production goes which is a whole other thing um oops let's flip flip my screen on accident so th this comes at a very good time for activision and blizzard now they've been going through all these problems major 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 problems and i got into this a little bit earlier with xbox now coming in and, and Microsoft coming in. Microsoft and Xbox have been known. It's, it's really been the Phil Spencer moniker, who got a promotion, by the way, in this deal. He is now CEO of Xbox. No longer president, he's CEO of Xbox. They've been known for good management, to let creativity thrive, uh, to, to you know let developers do what they want to do. Not, not to micromanage, but to say, do what you do best. We are going to empower you. We're going to give you bigger budgets. We're going to give you the resources and the infrastructure that you need. And this is your, this is going to be, you know, working under Xbox is going to be your studio fulfilled. We're going to give you everything that you need and you just make games. We're going to put them on Game Pass and the output of Game Pass is going to be insane. Microsoft is going to be able to release like a AAA game a first party AAA game on game pass like like every month at this point once this deal is done it's absolutely insane and i'm still predicting that they acquire at least one more company in the next one to two years i think they're going to acquire a japanese company not this size most likely but they will acquire somebody in japan because they want to establish a bigger foothold in japan mark my words microsoft will buy a japanese company which one will it be i don't know but i hope it's not sega anyway that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Please be Bandai Namco. I didn't think about that one. Bandai Namco does have a pretty big footprint. I don't know what the value of that company is, like monetarily, but I could see that. That I could, Dude, that would probably be the best one for them, actually, because a lot of people look at Square Enix, you know, because it's Square, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest. Um, and a lot of people always say Capcom, you know, Resident Evil, um, you know, all that stuff. Mega Man, Street Fighter. I think Bandai Namco would be the one to have the biggest actual, like, cultural impact. I think that's a really good point, Endo. Um, but, so anyway, Activision Blizzard is an absolute mess right now. Call of Duty is having server problems, it's having cheater problems. World of Warcraft has been run basically into the ground by, by the developers who made a, a really uh, unfortunate expansion. They've kind of ruined the lore in a lot of ways. Um, and the subscriber count is way down as many people have moved on to Final Fantasy. My ring light is facing the wrong direction, I just noticed, too. Great production. I was too excited. I just got online. Um, so, all, Overwatch 2, right? In development hell. Uh, they, they made a sequel to a game that should have been a live service game that was doing extremely well, had a major, major, major esports presence with Overwatch League. And now... We've, we've heard almost nothing about Overwatch 2. It's been announced. We still don't have it. We know almost nothing about it. The, the things at Activision Blizzard are not good. They're actually very, very vulnerable, despite being one of the most valuable video game companies out there. These brands still have strength, but they've made a lot of missteps on top of their actual cultural and management issues. So now Xbox comes in. And, and what Xbox has been known for is saying, hey, uh, you know, you do you, we're going to give you everything that you need. And I still think they're going to say that, but I think them coming in is going to be very liberating for the developers of, of especially Blizzard, because they're going to say, all right, make the games you want to make. And there are countless, countless games that Blizzard wanted to make. And the developers left Blizzard because Activision would always cancel their games for the, the stupidest reason. So, so. Activision's big thing was, unless this game can become a billion a billion dollar game, we we will not fund it. We will not go through with it. We will not green light it. And countless games died on that hill within Activision. They were working on a StarCraft FPS 
which was going to be like Battlefield. So imagine uh, Battlefield, but set in the StarCraft universe, futuristic. Uh, it was going to be big, big, large scale multiplayer FPS set in the StarCraft universe. Canceled. Um, there was a Warcraft AR game for mobile that may or may not still be in development. But what, from what I've heard, it basically ceased. Canceled. Uh, there's been a lot, a lot of other games and a lot of other major developers who have left Blizzard because they can't make the games they want. Anything StarCraft. Where is StarCraft 3? Because RTS games can only make a few hundred million dollar profit and not a billion because they're not super easily monetizable. Activision has not approved it. Warcraft 4, the RTS, have not approved it. So I think with Xbox and Microsoft coming in, they're going to say, yes, Blizzard, you can finally make the games that you want because we're going to put them on Game Pass and they're going to be a success. And I think this is going to be very, very, very liberating, especially for the Blizzard side. I, I come from a background of being a, a Blizzard fan and all these issues have really stung to see the, the abuses that have happened there. And, you know, between hopefully this stuff becoming public and, and kind of the, the, the tables turning, and now this acquisition with new management coming in, um, I, I really hope that things change at Blizzard and we can get back to, I don't want to say the Blizzard of old, because that, would, that wouldn't be right, and it, especially since the Blizzard of old had those cultural problems, but a new day at Blizzard where Blizzard can again be a prominent force within the gaming industry, because they absolutely have the IPs to do it. I mean, StarCraft, WarCraft, Diablo, Overwatch. I mean, there's no reason they can't be. And I, and I really hope that this can happen again. Um, and, and also, you know, Microsoft gains a mobile gaming foothold here, which has been one of the holes in their strategy. So they get King as part of this deal, who owns, yeah, Lost Vikings, uh, who owns uh, Candy Crush is their most prominent property, but they've made a lot of other games. If you go check out King, uh, they make a, they've made a lot of mobile games, including a Crash Bandicoot mobile game. Uh, so they get Call of Duty Mobile, which is a monster. So Microsoft gains in the mobile market. This this kind of kickstarts them in the mobile market because they've been they've been a little behind there compared to the other areas. Uh, and I think their cloud streaming strategy fits into the, covering the mobile market as well, since you could uh, stream cloud X Cloud to any mobile device. Uh, they've got issues with Apple there as well, but they 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 figured it out. Um, and then they also they gain a huge foothold in the in the esports space. So now Xbox all under one roof. They've got Call of Duty League, they've got Overwatch League, and they've got HCS with Halo. So I mean, it, if you consider like all the big major esports, you expect to be around for the next ten years. You think of what? You think of Call of Duty, hopefully Overwatch, right? If they can turn it around and make it prominent again, which they should be able to. You think of Halo, you think of Splitgate, right? Um, and then you, you, you also think of uh, Counter-Strike, you think of League of Legends, you think of Valorant. Is there really any others? I mean, Microsoft, I'm not going to say there's not any others, um, but those are the ones that come to mind for me, at least. Um, I, I thought about the Bungie thing too. Uh, Endo, and, and the thing about that is Bungie wasn't owned by Activision. They only uh, had the publishing rights. Activision only held the publishing rights to Destiny. So hypothetically, if Activision didn't botch that relationship, Microsoft would have acquired the publishing rights to Destiny, which would have been funny and insane. Uh, probably... Uh, they could have, yeah. They definitely could have brought Destiny in to, into the fold. Be, not only because Bungie developed uh, Halo, but because Destiny is one of Phil Spencer's favorite games. He's a huge, hardcore Destiny fan. Um, so, uh, Endo asked, well, what do I think about potential antitrust issues? Uh, a couple things. So, I, I think I think people, regulators, will ask questions. I think they'll get this one through. Um. And I think they'll do that by positioning the, the certain franchises, like saying, well, we're not going to make Call of Duty strictly exclusive because that's the biggest one, right? We're not going to make Call of Duty strictly exclusive to Xbox platforms. Uh, we're we're going to keep that, 
you know, like they're not promising to make these games exclusive. So I think they'll get it through. If they try to make another acquisition of this size, uh, I think then they might start getting in some in some trouble. But if you look at um, this is a very interesting stat that I saw. If you look at gaming, actual gaming revenue as it stands right now, this is on Microsoft's side. So because Microsoft has only really started turning the tide over the past two, three years uh, with their strategy, because they came from a, a complete place of weakness after the Xbox uh, One era, right? Um, especially at launch. They were not in a good spot. Right now, um, you know, Xbox is not leading the way as far as gaming revenue goes. When you talk about just gaming revenue, it's just revenue. Um, Tencent is ahead of them. Apple is ahead of them because they take an insane cut from the iStore, uh, the Apple Store, iOS, whatever the heck you want to call it. And I believe uh, Sony is at least comparable to them, um, if not ahead of them at the moment. But that's because these Bethesda, this Bethesda thing hasn't kicked in and this Activision Blizzard thing hasn't kicked in. So even after this Activision Blizzard thing, um, obviously three years from now, we're going to be looking at a completely different story. But at this moment, I think the, the monetary figures are there for Microsoft to say, hey, we're in, we're in third, fourth, fifth place, man. Like, you know, we're, we're not we're not a monopoly. We're not running away from everybody else here, even though in the big picture, they very well may be. Um, but here's what I I'm going to give you some hot takes here. So I've heard a lot of uh, PlayStation. I don't want to say fans or just people just who you know don't like that Xbox is becoming this huge con conglomerate. Um, say, well, what, what's Sony going to do? What's Nintendo going to do? Because the reality is, uh, you know, people are starting to wonder, like, can these other companies keep up without buying a bigger piece of the pie themselves? And again, Microsoft would say, yeah, you can have Game Pass. Just, just You can have Game Pass. Just let us put it us on your platform and you get all the games. And that's why it's so clever and aggressive at the same time but people are saying you know what's so well, sony's got to buy something sony's got to buy square enix sony's got to buy capcom sony's got to buy uh you know whoever right uh so let me let me break something down for you uh and this is this these are all unofficial numbers so um you know, don't don't quote me on these. I'm not an actual business and an analyst. Here, here's Sony is worth, and you get different figures, right? And again, there's what what is worth, because um, you know Microsoft overpaid hypothetically for uh, for Activision. All of Sony, not just the PlayStation side. Is worth somewhere between 110 and 150 million dollars, or billion. I'm sorry, 110 and 150 billion. All of Sony, the entire company. Microsoft just paid 70 billion in cash. In cash, for Activision Blizzard. So, and I'm not trying to knock Sony by saying this, but they're not in the same ballpark. They're not even in the same sport. Like to quote Pulp Fiction. Microsoft is worth, let's see, so by comparison, uh, I'm not even going to do this math, 2,272 billion compared to 110 to 115 of Sony. So if Sony were to acquire a company for the size of, of Activision Blizzard for 70 billion, they would be expending almost their in, the entire value of their entire company. Sony, realistically, and I'm not trying to put them down. If they're two different companies with two different strategies and two different goals, I'm not saying anything about their, the quality of their lineup or whatever. This is pure value. Sony is worth a fraction of what Microsoft is worth. They cannot acquire somebody for $70 billion. And this is the problem that Sony runs into. And, and I really think that when, when Phil Spencer took over at Xbox, I think he went to Microsoft because Microsoft's not afraid to kill off products. They've considered killing off Xbox at least twice in the past uh, when it was not doing well. 
They're, you know, they killed Mixer. They killed the Zune. They killed, uh, uh, what the heck? Why can't I think of it? The Windows phone. You know, if, if a product's not successful, Microsoft will say, hey, this isn't meeting our standards. See ya. Um, and they did that with Mixer right after they spent a whole bunch of money and spent and signed Shroud and they signed Ninja. Uh, I think I think Phil Spencer went and he said, look, I have a plan to become to make Microsoft and to make Xbox the leader in gaming, the leader. We will dominate our competition, but we need to be no holds barred. We need to be aggressive and I need basically a blank check and we will take this industry by storm. And when I'm done, we will own it like literally. Or we can, you know, cut our losses and, and minimize things and just kind of be a, a niche company. Um, and uh, or, or just get out altogether, sell the company to whoever. Like they did with Mixer, they sold it to Facebook. And Microsoft said, we choose violence. We, we to, to mean it, we choose, uh, we choose to go all in. We choose to disrupt the industry and they are. Um, and see, this is the other thing. You're right, Endo. This is not about, people are looking at it wrong. This is not about what Sony does to, to counter this or what Nintendo does to counter this. Sure, they might pick up some more developers. I could see Sony realistically buying Square. I could see them buying uh, a, a, a company. It would likely be a Japanese company because they would leverage those relationships. Um, it's more likely because Amazon's getting into gaming. Apple's getting into gaming. Google's getting into gaming. This is my hottest take of the, of the, of the day. It's more likely that Amazon within the next five to 10 years or Google or Apple straight up buys PlayStation that, or, or freaking Sony altogether. Microsoft just bought Activision Blizzard for 70 billion. What's to say Amazon doesn't come down and say, hey, PlayStation, we'll pay you 150 billion to become part of Amazon. And we're gonna do the same thing that Microsoft is doing for their developers. We're gonna unleash you guys. You guys make amazing cinematic third person action games. We love what you're doing. We love God of War. We love Uncharted. We love The Last of Us. You know, we, whatever, the whole, the list goes on and on. Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, like you guys are doing awesome things. We wanna, we wanna buy you and you would do, you will do what you do best but we're going to empower you just like Microsoft is doing for their developers. And you won't have to. We'll take care of all your business side stuff. We're going to take care of, you know, managing your employees health care and, uh, you know, all that stuff. You guys focus on doing what you do best. You make some video game hardware and we're going to we're going to we're going to build the PlayStation brand. It's just that that PlayStation brand is going to be part of Amazon. All the games you make are going to be on our new service, Luna or uh, whatever. It's going to be on PlayStation as well. PlayStation's not going away, but we're going to put your games uh, in front of more people because you're going to have bigger budgets. Um, it very realistically could happen. Uh, Amazon or Google, uh, could, because Sony, Sony and Nintendo, Nintendo, Sony's got a very strong brand. They really do. So I'm not, they're not going anywhere. Like this is not a, Oh my God, PlayStation's going out of business tomorrow type thing. That's not what's happening. But if PlayStation 10, 20 years from now, uh, wants to continue to compete, they're going to need to strike some type of alliance, right? I've heard a theory that, hey, maybe Sony and Nintendo team up somehow. Great thought. Um, again, I, I don't I don't see it happening because of how futile both of those companies are in the way that they operate. And Nintendo is, to their credit, playing their own game. And I would argue that Nintendo has the same issues that Sony does with the value of their, their ecosystem. They're asking people to pay $50, $60 per game compared to, uh, you know, Game Pass and all this stuff. And I think that's going to become more and more of a problem for Sony and Nintendo. Uh, but um, Nintendo has always done their own thing. They're not, they're not trying to compete with Xbox. They're not trying to complete, compete with PlayStation. They are, right? But they've always got a, a new unique gimmick to sell you. 
and I don't mean gimmick in a negative way. I mean like with the Wii, something that breaks the mold, and that will always have a place in the industry, right? Um, they did the virtual bo Virtua Boy a hundred years ago. Uh, not a hundred, literally, but like you know, what I'm, Nintendo's always got something. The Switch, you know, an another unique thing. I still think Nintendo would benefit greatly by having a business partner like Microsoft, like uh, Sony, like Amazon, like Google, who could give them a robust online and social eco ecosystem so their franchises like Mario Kart, like Smash, uh, like Splatoon could be fully realized uh, in, uh, with on online games. Um, but, alas, that, again, they operate much differently than they're a very old school company so that nintendo going third party thing has been a rumor for literally 20 years and i don't think we're any closer to it because nintendo with the switch just made bank so um you never know i do think nintendo needs to embrace mobile gaming more uh, i think they've been a little slow to embrace it and they would benefit from it as does sony really sony needs to embrace it more too um, but this industry is really going to rapidly change over the next five to ten years and i think microsoft is playing the playing the smart game they're playing the, the big picture i think amazon and google and apple are getting in, in on it um they're going to get in on it and uh sony and it, i mean the whole industry is about to rapidly change and i'm not saying that it's for it's for the better or worse it's just it, it's changing and it's gonna change and it'll be interesting to see now do a couple more dice uh tip over you know a couple more dominoes tip over from this I, I i do you see somebody like an ea uh get acquired ea has had a long-term relationship with microsoft long-term close relationship um konami is in a really weird spot right uh they don't have many developers of their own anymore at all but they've got properties sega is in a weird spot they don't have many developers of their own but they've got a lot of properties um Ubisoft. Ubisoft has a lot of, of uh, developers as well as properties, but they've been mismanaged over the past few years. They've really hurt their brand. They've had uh, management scandals of their own, harassment scandals of their own, and uh, they've really had a hard time getting a foothold these last couple of years. They've kind of misplayed the Tom Clancy games in a lot of ways. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is nowhere to be found. Um, Hyperscape was a major, major, major flop, unfortunately, because it was really a decent game. Um, you know, all their games they reveal keep keep getting negative reactions. So maybe Ubisoft is 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 the next that somebody looks at and says, "Yep, we're gonna snap them up. They're vulnerable. Buy buy when they're low," kind of thing. Uh, and, and again, I think that's what happened with Activision. Even though they're they're worth seventy billion um, to Microsoft. I think this deal could be the salvation of, of Activision Blizzard because this company has mishandled their IPs so badly despite still churning out billions of dollars from them. The damage that they've been doing to their brand and to their, to their communities and to their fans is starting to snowball very quick. And I think if Microsoft can now come in and say, hey guys, there's a new sheriff in town. We need to fix this. And we need you guys to, you know, take control of the ship. Bobby Kotick is out. It's already leaked. Once the deal is complete, Bobby Kotick is out. It's not really a getting fired thing. It's like a, hey, we don't need you anymore. It's the nice way to put it. Um, but it, it, it's truly, truly an interesting day in, in video game history. This is by far the biggest deal the industry has ever seen. And uh, it's, it's funny because I was thinking back earlier to some of the bigger acquisitions in video gaming history that popped out in my head. And I thought of, uh, Microsoft bought Rare from Nintendo when I was in high school. And it was like, I think it was like $300 million. And that at the time was like insane. Like, oh my God, like they paid $300 million and they got Rare. And since they got Rare, Rare's done not that many games to be, and, uh, in fairness, $300 million is nothing by today's standards, right? They paid, what, like $2.5 billion for Microsoft and Mojang. Which, when I first heard that, I was like, man, that's only for one game and one studio. $2.5 billion. Oh, my gosh. 
and and here we are like it obviously was a brilliant move minecraft is worth so much so much money they've executed that basically flawlessly and that was for 2.5 billion 70 billion for activision blizzard it's so crazy but again you got to remember not only are they getting call of duty overwatch diablo uh world of warcraft what am i forgetting starcraft warcraft crash spyro they're getting all those developers as well to work on all those games and and a lot of people are getting excited at the thought of not only the crossovers that they can do you know master chief skin and call of duty people are already calling for that right and some of those types of things you might see in the next one to two years those those will be easy um but people are getting really excited thinking wow you could now have a developer from bethesda come through and work on an activision property you know you could have um the developer of of the most recent crash bandicoot make a banjo kazooie game you could have uh you know I i'm trying to think of people did it when bethesda came out too you know maybe 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 id software makes a halo game someday a very mature dark or halo game you know like people are getting excited and some of that stuff's probably a little crazy but you just never know it does open a lot of interesting doors and possibilities to that type of thing um you know xbox game studios smash clone seems like a, a no-brainer at this point right like gonna happen um so um uh, epic 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 stuff if you guys got other questions about this deal or thoughts throw them in chat i've been talking for 36 minutes and uh we'll continue talking about this deal because it's gonna be a big deal forever and it's gonna be very interesting to watch um but i'm gonna stop hitting the record button here for a moment streams continuing i was gonna do this whole thing on twitter spaces and i totally forgot we got more gaming news to go over today by the way believe it or not 